me and Catcher Fear are going to be showing um, Arduino Control by Mathematica. So, okay, so for, you know, those who do not know, this is an Arduino. We have one right here, just so you can see how big it is. It's about that big. It's got, it's basically a little environment for a, a microcontroller, which you can program with C, that will enable you to, you know, code various analog and digital pins to perform various tasks. So basically, you can just program it to control servos and motors and LEDs and, and things like that. And it's now used frequently for people who just want to make little robots and things that do various tasks to as just kind of a simple building block for the, the brain of the of the device. So there it is. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go right into the, the demo. So this is the code. I just need to run needs Arduino link. So it's just going to then link Arduino. So that's it returning. It sees this Arduino object. So now we're going to run Arduino Connect with um, various libraries installed, which Kesha will get to later. Um, okay, so now, now we should be connected. So next slide. So I just have hooked up. I have a bunch of things, but one of which is this circuit here, which is basically just a potentiometer um, with the uh, middle pin, the one that voltage, the, the one which voltage changes on, is plugged into port 5, port A5, analog 5. And so I can just run this piece of code here, and it'll actually return the dynamically the number from this potentiometer, which is on this, buried in this board of wires and various other sensors, which I'll get to later. And uh, it returns a number. But then this is nice because, you know, you could visualize this in a better way, like here. If here, let me just so here we just have kind of an angular, ang angular gauge and a list pot hooked up to it. And it's, you know, it's just, this is just showing that you could, you know, easily visualize this, this connection and things like that. Because that's, you know, it's good for prototyping and things like that, because that's very difficult running on the Arduino platform, which can just return a number, okay, or a string. So, okay. Um, next I have an another example using potentiometer. This is the uh, thing that you might have seen, the radial engine demonstration, but hooked up to the potentiometer. Just So as I spin it, it'll actually twist the engine as well. It's just kind of neat, just showing that you could, you know, you could attach this to any anything you wanted, any piece of Mathematica code. All right, let me kill that. Okay, now we've got another sensor, which is a ultrasound sensor. So if I run this Arduino run of, of ultrasonic range, it'll just tell me the, the nearest distance from this ultrasound sensor. So now I'm gonna just run it, and we'll, we should get this visual thing. So now we need, um, I'm just gonna use this podium, or okay, I'll use this piece of cardboard. So this is the distance from this ultrasound sensor right here in, uh, in inches to the nearest object. And it's just reading this over the Arduino through a library, which is difficult, which um, Kesha will go over, how that works. And so that's just kind of letting you visualize the distance in inches. Okay, so now, um, now moving on, we've got um, a more advanced example which is an accelerometer we have here. So first thing is set up and calibration. So we want to run this, but first I want to get it sitting kind of flat here. Okay. And I'm just going to initialize and run. Okay, now it's just going to take the mean of the x, y, and z values over um, a course of a little bit of time just to make sure that it will, um, over the course of um, six seconds, just to make, just for calibration reasons. Okay, those are the um, calibration numbers. So you can see there's one Z or one G in the Z direction and um, stuff like that. Kind of neat. Okay, now this is just the raw movement, and this is the setting up. So X, 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 Y, Y, and Z, Z are all the the raw or, or the 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 movement, including calibration and such. So we can you know visualize this with a plot, you know, for the accel acceleration, and then. Uh, now, though, because that's boring, we want something that, that looks cooler. We've got a alpha spiky that's, that's rotating. 
um, according to the uh, rotation of this accelerometer. By the way, this is the this here. Let me let me point out. This is the accelerometer here. This thing with the glowing red light on it. That's the accelerometer. So that's kind of neat. All right, now um, now I'm going to go to Keshav is going to explain how um, how some of this works. All right, hi. So. In case you didn't hear my name the past couple times, I'm Keshav Sahari. I work at Wolfram Research. And uh, so I'm going to give you a peek under the hood of how we actually use Mathematica to leverage the power of a low-level C programming task, like programming the Arduino. So if you've ever used an Arduino before, you know that the Arduino IDE already exists. So what's the purpose of using Mathematica? And so that's, that's one big question I'm going to answer. Another, another one is, you know, what are the advantages? Of, like, how is hardware actually linked to Mathematica? And how can these ideas be used to control physical systems in general? So one, one thing is the biggest uh, advantage is rapid prototyping. Uh, as you saw, these pins on the Arduino can now be controlled in real time versus before with the IDE where you'd have to upload a program on there and you'd have to pray that it works and you'd you know, pray that you know, see enough that it would work. And here, so here we have re we've implemented reliable I.O. over the uh, serial connection and we can acquire data in real time. So here, this is just an example. We, we can dynamically read off of an, an analog pin. And as you just saw with Christopher's many demonstrations, the visualization becomes incredibly easy with Mathematica. So we can just take these, we can take this data and we can do interesting things with it. So here's a very high level picture of what's actually going on. Uh, so here we have Mathematica, and Mathematica is using the symbolic C package to, uh, to, create, to generate a serial I.O. server. And the server is just a program that runs on the Arduino, and it listens for incoming data from Mathematica over the serial connection. And the way we send data and receive data on the serial connection is through serial I.O., which is a package written, by, written for Mathematica, and it makes Mathematica symbols for easily sending and receiving serial data. And it also manages the cross-compiler, so you don't actually have to worry about uploading it to the device or doing any of those uh, tasks, those rote tasks. Those are all done for you. So serial I.O. is pretty straightforward. It just sends and receives serial packets to and from Mathematica. Symbolic C, uh, if a lot of people are not too familiar with this. This is a really useful Mathematica tool. It's a wrapper on the C language and allows you to create C constructs in a functional style. So here we have this, if you want to say x equals 0, we just we call the function c assign, we give it x, and we give it zero. And this would, and if we run two C code string, we can get the string x equals zero. Now, obviously, this isn't too useful because you can type x equals zero with three characters, right? But if you wanted to make some larger construct, like for example, checking an, an input variable against uh, like a number of different inputs, and you know, doing a different function based on what input you're getting. Then you, know, you can use map thread. Instead of having to write all that out, you can just map thread a C if over all the inputs that over all the inputs you can get and all the what you want to do as a result of getting those inputs. So here's a sample serial I.O. server. This is actually what Mathematica is generating and putting onto the Arduino. So it's just a bunch of lines of code. And here you see there, you probably don't see it, but there, uh, there are uh, functions for all the various uh, commands that we w that Mathematica can send to the Arduino, and you know we m we map those commands to uh, calling some function. The Arduino will call some function based on the command it receives, and uh, do something. And this this it's a dynamically generated serial I/O server. So when if we wanted to add more functionality, and for example, if we wanted to add the accelerometer or the ultrasonic sensor into the serial I/O server, there's a very extensible structure to do so. And that's what I'm going to talk about next is. Uh, extensibility of Arduino Link. Uh, so actually, for a developer to go in and add more functionality to it by adding sensors or by adding support for shields or all the, the vast world of Arduino devices that exist. So, I'm, uh, so instead of just you know, kind of going over it in a broad sense, I'm actually going to show you an example where we're going to control servo motors through the built-in servo.h library. So this, uh, this beast right here is a, is a laser turret. It's basically two servo motors that have a laser pointer mounted on top. So the laser pointer can pan and tilt. And there's a camera behind it, and we're going to use mathematical image processing to point the laser at stuff. So, um, 
So step one is to write a connect module. So we tried to make this as easy and as uh, developer friendly as possible. Basically, you just you just say what are the global constructs that this module needs? What does it need to run on the serial I/O server? And what are the functions that this that this module implements? So like for example, Arduino servo attach, Arduino servo write, and all of the and these these functions get mapped to a list of symbolic C. Uh, arguments and there, or, or they get mapped to something like Arduino Connect input, which generates symbolic C. So it actually does the inputting of serial data automatically for you. So the developer is kind of hidden from you know, like having to deal with that implementation. So, um, and step two is to actually just install the Connect modules. That's what I'm going to do now. Uh, so, um, grab the package. So I'm going to run Arduino Connect, and just like you saw before with Christopher's thing, we're just going to I'm going to specify includes, and I'm going to include that library that, was, that I just created. Now this library is built into Arduino Link, but uh, any other library you made would follow the same general idea. So this so what's happening is it just it created a serial I/O server that implemented the library and it uploaded it to the device. And you know there's a ma there's also a manual way to do this with Arduino install Connect module. And step three is to actually use these, uh, use the defined functions within Arduino Run. So in this case, like Arduino Servo Attach or Arduino Servo Write. And you also have the option of creating a Mathematica symbol that just encapsulates Arduino Run. So here I just attach a servo. If I wanted to attach a servo to you know, give it pan and a tilt, then I can just map Arduino Servo Attach with the given inputs over uh, the whatever I want to send to it. So. The basic idea, the, the general idea of Arduino Run is you give a function name, the one that was defined in the Connect module, and you, and you give it whatever arguments that are sent to that function through Arduino Connect input. And so here I'm going to show you a, uh, tar so here's the actual targeting demo. So you're going to, this is already connected, so I'm going to attach the servos. All right, if the laser dot is a little weak, it's because I'm a bad solderer, so. Uh, Oh, yes, it's probably it. Okay, and so I'm just going to define servo set, and now run this beast. And now the laser will actually follow my hand, or it should fall. Now it will follow. Oh, we getting some latency problems. Okay. So, as you can see, the red dot over my hand is where Mathematica thinks the centroid of the image is, and the green dot should follow said red dot. Oh, camera. Okay, sorry. The camera actually needs to be calibrated since we just walked right in here and set it down. So. All right, and you know, you can you can do fun stuff like you know hang your keys in front of it and have it follow that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can entertain your pets for hours now with Mathematica. So, uh, <laughs> so that that's the basic idea. So, um, uh, and so we. Are getting some latency issues, but the general idea is that you know we, you can incorporate all these powerful tools that are built into Mathematica already with a physical device that's actually operating in the real world. For example, this physical device moving a laser pointer around, right? or a physical device that you know, entertains your cats or whatever. So, um, okay. So just to you know kind of summarize what we just uh, showed you. Uh, so, what can you actually make with Mathematica and the Arduino? So you can, use, you can utilize all these, these powerful functionality of Mathematica as a high-level prototyping development environment. You can, you can measure, you connect to the physical world. You can actually you know, measure properties about it. You can alter things. You can move things around. And uh, you, can, you can visualize the data that you're receiving from it. So that's a, that's a really powerful feature that you couldn't do otherwise. You couldn't just make a visualization program, or you could, it would take you a lot of time if you had to do it by yourself. You had to write the C code, write the serial I.O. stuff. So Mathematica, so this package kind of takes care of all of that for you. So all you really have to worry, worry about is what, you, what are you going to do. And 
it, and also it allows Arduino Link to be extended to the sensors and the shields that you want to extend it to. Right? So if you, want, if you have a specific application in mind, it's really easy to extend the package to uh, meet that application. So uh, that's it for my talk, my part of the talk. And uh, so we're going to kind of open it up to questions.